Hey there, in this video I'm going to take you along with me as I add the Reloom style guide components to an already existing Webflow project. Now this project is a very old Webflow project of mine that I built when I was still learning the platform all the way back in 2018. So needless to say, this project predates Client First and predates Reloom. Now really quick to serve as a little disclaimer is I would create a backup of your project. So down here in the left hand side there's this cog icon and in backups I would create a backup of your project before pasting in the style guide components just so you can always revert back just in case. In addition this project was a concept project of mine so obviously once I paste in the style guide components I can arbitrarily make the design decisions regarding like sizing etc. So I don't know the specifics of your project. So basically the purpose of this video is more so to show you what you can expect when trying to add the style guide of yourself. So once I paste in the components and I make decisions like on sizing, it might not always apply to your project. So now before I do that, let me just kind of show you uh, what I'm working with with this project that I haven't opened in quite some time. So if we look at this heading here, we can see that I gave it a class name of text block 8 and a combo class of hero and a width for some reason of 100% and 56 pixels. So obviously not anything I would do today and clearly something I did when I was still learning the platform and trying to learn development in Webflow. So with that said, I'm going to go into the Reloom style guide that I already cloned. And I'm going to head over to the style guide page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the page wrapper. And with the page wrapper selected, I'm going to copy to my clipboard using command C or control C. And once that's copied to my clipboard, I can go back to that project. And in this case, I'm going to create a style guide page. You might have one already created. Since this was a project I built when I was still learning, I obviously didn't build one. So I'm going to add that page now. I'm going to create a new page and I can call this style guide. And I'm going to make it a draft for now. And then with the body selected, I can hit command V or control V to paste in that page wrapper. And it's going to paste in the components and then we'll have our usual conflicts with button it's going to rename to button three so now that i have the components pasted in let's just take a look of what we have so far so with these html headings and elements these are the ones with the purplish red tag if i select one of them like this heading one we can see that it's still going to keep the sizing and units we have from the project already. So like my heading one is 38 pixels and a line height of 44 pixels. But if I go to one of the ones with the bluish headings, the bluish selectors, like the heading style one, which is a reloom component class, it has a size of 3.5 rem and a line height of 1.2. So basically what this tells us is all of our HTML elements in Webflow. So all of our default HTML headings, the paragraphs, the links, the block quotes, unordered lists, ordered lists, etc., are going to retain the specifics of what we set up in the project already. But the reloom classes are going to be what reloom set them up to be. So like text size large is going to be 1.25 rem. And then the line height is going to be what the body is. So I can update the body after this to be like 1.5 dash, and that should fix this. We can go down to one of the icons, and it's 3 rem by 3 rem. So there are some things, it's like 80% ready to go. There are some small dotting the I, crossing the T things we need to take care of. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the body. And I'm going to go body all pages. And I'm going to update the size to be 1 rem. And the line height to be 1.5 dash. So now that the line height is updated, let me go back to the text size large. And yeah, so that fixes that. So 1.25 rem, 1.5 dash. 
text size regular, one RAM, 1.5 dash. So what I would need to do now is I can select heading one, one of these HTML headings. I can go all H1 headings and I can update this. So instead of 38 pixels, I can say 38 divided by 16 rem and it'll be 2.375 rem and just for this video I can make the line height instead of 44 pixels I'll just go 1.2 dash I can go to h2 so I'll select all h2 headings and instead of 32 pixels I'll go 32 divided by 16 rem and then I'll make this one 1.2 dash as well and then I would obviously do this for all of the remaining headings. And then I can go to my paragraphs and I can say all paragraphs and that's set one rem 1.5 dash. I can look at my links that seems to be working. And so you would go on and check all of the HTML elements just to make sure that the sizing is consistent with what you want. So like block quote. This is still 18 pixels, so I can make that 18 divided by 16 rem. And I'll just use 1.5 dash for this video. So now that we've basically talked about those red HTML headings, another thing I want to bring to your attention is buttons, since that was the conflict we had. So we have these buttons here that were part of the Relim component. And you can see a button three is secondary, is small, is icon. And then I can even scroll down to where the buttons are. So we have button three here. This is the main button. So this is what would be button in the Reloom style guide. And we have button is small, button three is small, and button three is secondary. Now, if this was a Reloom style guide, that I cloned and built from that point forward and then pasted in Reloom components. This button three, button two, button four conflict occasionally happens, in which case you could just remove is secondary, remove button three and give it the button class. However, I can't do that in this situation because this was a project already built prior to the Reloom style guide edition. So I have a totally different item with the class name button. So I could either leave it as button three or what I could do. And once again, disclaimer, this was a concept project of mine. So I have all the de decision making here is I can go into my classes, the style selector, and I can go to button. And I see I have something here with button, but I want this button three to be my main button. So with these settings here with this wrench icon, I can change it to be instead of button. I can say button dash old and now that's button old and I can go to button three and I can go to the icon again and change this to button and make it lowercase hit the check mark and now buttons here and button is small button is secondary is transparent And it seems like they're default, but once I click it, it fixes. And now some of these I'd have to fix, like sizing. Because if we see here, I gave it, for some reason, I gave them the buttons an image. So if I go to my main button, I can delete this image. And then I can fix some of these. So I have to account for that image I had that I was using as an icon. So we can see it's 20 and 54. So I'll go 20 divided by 16 rem, 14 by 16 rem, 1.25 rem, and then 0.875 rem. Well, in all, I'm sure you get the idea by now that once you paste in the Reloom style guide, 75%, 80% will be ready to go, and it'll just be small detail stuff you need to work out. So there you go. That's how you can add the Reloom style guide to an already existing project. Hope this helps in your project. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you next time.